Welcome to the Next Level American Dream podcast, brought to you by Thompson Multifamily Group. Your hosts, Abigail and Sean, will discuss how you can take your American dream to the next level through real estate investing, business practices, and personal development. Join us as we share our experiences as a father-daughter duo who are trying to accomplish their goal of financial freedom. We hope you learn more about how to define and achieve your American dream. Here's another episode of Next Level American Dream. On this episode of Next Level American Dream, Sean got the chance to talk to David Rosenbaum. David is a seasoned real estate investor and has firsthand experience with both single family and multifamily real estate. Today, he explains how he got into multifamily real estate and the highs and lows of acquiring his first deal. If you're interested in learning more about multifamily investing, visit our website at thompsonmultifamilygroup.com. Hi, David. Uh, welcome to Next Level American Dream Podcast. Uh, thanks for being on. Hi, I'm, I'm honored. Thanks for having me. Good, good. Um, so let's uh, let's start off by just telling everybody a little bit about where you came from and, and how where you are today and how you kind of got here. Sure, sure. So I my background is really single family, uh, fix and flip, and a few single family buy and holds. I've been in this business, gosh, I think it's a little bit going on ten years now, on and off, with a partner of mine. We did a lot of fix and flips, and I think we were talking earlier. I've lost more money in the single family business that I made. And so that's really my, my background has been that single family. I mean, it's kind of what's gotten me to the, to the multifamily space of today. I really, it opened my eyes on if I really wanted to get to where I wanted to be, I needed to kind of change my, my thought process. Not that single family is a bad thing at all. I just wasn't good at it. I wasn't good at it. I know it wasn't going to be our future. So I transitioned myself into getting into the multifamily space, but that's my, that's my background is the single family side. Yeah. And we, you know, we talked to your partners on uh, your first deal, the Roysters back in May, yes. we had them on the show and we, we went through the deal with them, but t- let's talk a little bit about your experience in that first deal. You, 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 you purchased a property in Tulsa, kind of run us through. Mm-hmm. So you, yeah. you, you made a decision to go from single family to multifamily, run us through kind of how that, that took place. You, 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 and, and how you ended up with that deal maybe. Sure, sure. So probably about two years ago, as I was just saying, we were looking at how do we get out of what we're doing into the multifamily space? It's all we heard. Get in the multifamily, you know, rather than owning a single rental property, you get into multiple doors. That's where, you know, that's where the legacy wealth is built. So we did a lot of self-teaching. We were into podcasts, reading books, talking to folks like yourself, just folks that have been in the multifamily space, right? Went to a lot of seminars prior to COVID. But about, I think last January, I made a decision with me and my partner that we were going to get a mentor. And I believe everybody should have a mentor, whether it's spiritually, uh, financially, or relationally, anything you have, I think we all need mentors. Someone that's paved the way or has been there prior to that's done it. And so we ran across Corey Peterson, his program, which I know you're very familiar with his program. And we put up some money to go out for three days into Arizona to learn what Corey had and what he's been doing. And I'll tell you what, Sean, when I was out there, like just getting out there, my mindset was, I hate to sound this way, was really, this is it. Like for me, I'm 50. Back then I was getting ready to be 50. It's what I had. I had no savings, had done very well in single family. Like I knew this was going to be the next eight to 10 years. This is what I had to do. It wasn't a question of when and I had to do it. And I'll never forget, it's a 22 of us sitting in this U-shaped uh, meeting room with, with Corey. And I looked at him, I was on the corner and he'll tell the story too. I looked at him and said, hey, we're going to do business together someday. I don't know when it is, but we're going to do business. I just knew I was going to get a multifamily deal. Now, prior to going to the to the class, I had had put my feelers out there with some brokers and a few folks that I knew telling them I was getting into the multifamily space, didn't know what I was talking about, but I kind of knew some of the verbiage that, you know, send me some deals, send me what you got. So I get out to the class and I went to the class, which was phenomenal. And as I was going through that, a, a friend of mine was an acquaintance, brought an off market deal, wasn't through a broker in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And after I left Corey's class, I took all of his, his, his tools and systems and I took this deal 
and I went through the process. I analyzed the deal. I looked at the deal, did everything I was taught. I didn't skip a step because I, I've been known to sometimes, you know, skip some stuff. And but I told myself, I'm going to follow this to the T. And I went through and I was like, hey, this, this deal still kind of works. And so the management company that we have today, I threw it by some of these folks, some investors that he had, and some partners, and they liked it. I like, this is great. Let's put an offer in the property. Got an LOI, a letter of intent was accepted. And we went up there and we did due diligence. We started our due diligence. I'm, I'm blown away here at this point. I'm thinking, this is great. I mean, everything, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just hair on fire going through the process from what I learned in Corey's class. Is this, this, I got is, your out first, there. this is really this your is first the, deal you've ever looked at really, right? Yeah, this is the, this is the first one I've ever looked yeah. at. I mean, I looked at other deals, but the first one on site. Right. So it was actually surreal. I was like, wow, they accepted it. I guess I'm doing something right. We had had some talks with Corey a little bit on it. So I think he had seen it and kind of put a little bit of a blessing on it. I don't think it took a deep dive into it at this point, but he rolled the dice and, you know, put some earnest money up and went out there. What could we lose? Go through due diligence. Everybody loved it. Okay. Now you have to understand this property is run down. Uh, it's got uh, a lot of section eight, what they call it Oklahoma housing on it. Probably I'd say 50%. If I had to say that uh, the owner was in very bad health. And so I know they had to get rid of it, but believe it or not, this property was situated in between million dollar homes and it literally sits right next to Southern Hills country club in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is a very prestigious country club. They actually have uh, major PGA tours there, events there. Anyhow, we walk the property. Everybody loves it. We come back together. We start going through the process of getting ready to close on this property and start our, our capital raise. For whatever reason, I won't dive too much into it. For whatever reason, the, the other partners, they, it just didn't go forward. They didn't want to go forward with it. Whatever it was, everything was fine, was okay. Well, I remember the feeling in my stomach, my stomach just sank because I knew I, me and my partner went at a point ourselves and didn't have the full raise to take this property down. But I just knew in the back of my mind, I was like, we're, we're buying this property. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. I physically got to the point on the last day when we due diligence was going to end. And I called the seller myself, the guy who gave me the number. I called him. I said, look, we want the property. Here's what happened. Can you give us some more time? And I think God was watching out for Sean, to be honest with you. And he gave us a second chance. So at that time, kind of as this is going on, I'm, I'm bitting, bitting pieces together, but Dave and Patty Royster, who were at the same class I was at with Corey had invested passively in some of Corey's deals. I had remember when we left there, Patty's like, Hey, let's stay in contact. Let's kind of have like an accountability call each week. Let's, let's just keep ourselves. So we're doing the right things, which we did. It was only us on the call each week. So I tossed the deal their way. They loved it. Well, they liked it. They didn't love this point. They liked it. And they brought in their brother-in-law and Patty's brother, Chris Kemp. To, to look at this deal. So we got another LOI together, same one, got it accepted with a new group, redid due diligence again, believe it or not. Now I have already, this is my second time around, so I feel like an expert. And we all loved it. We knew it needed work, had a heavy lift to it, had some cleanup we needed to do. And we now had to go raise about a million dollars to take this property down. So now I'm just super excited because we're you know, going through the property, this process of closing this property. And I, I'll tell you what, it was, unless you, those that have never done a property, and I know some go smoother than others, this was probably one of the most challenging things I've ever had to go through. Now, you can go to class, you can read a book, you can be on a podcast, you can listen to a podcast. But until you go through it, you know, it's like anything else, you don't know what you don't know. And there's a lot of moving pieces and a lot of moving parts. And we didn't do a very good job raising money because we didn't know any better. We really didn't know what we were doing. If you look at us now, it's a lot different scenario. But back then, you just didn't know. We didn't know, you know what to go through. So the raise was a little short on this property, but we were able to get it done. We got the property closed December 10th of last year. So I went to Corey's in March had the property contracted, it went out of contract. Then the Roysters and myself and my partner went back into contract and we closed 
December 10th of last year. So wow. crazy. That is crazy. Your first, your first deal that you really looked at and you ended up, you ended up buying it. You know, that's, that's, that it's almost unheard of really. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the numbers we hear all the time is that you've got to underwrite a hundred properties before you, even, yeah. you know, before you even get a contract set out, you know, yep. it's meant to that's, be. That, that's amazing. So yeah. how is the property doing today? Let's, I guess maybe we'll, we'll skip forward a little bit to, to yeah. uh, that's, that's the story of how you acquired it, but yeah. now you've owned it for a little while. I guess what have you yeah. got? It's, that's been uh, nine months now, right? Right. 10 months. A little under nine months. Yep. 10 months. So you've got a little bit of a snapshot. You've gone through, you've gone through a lot of your construction, uh, your lease mm-hmm. up is happening, I guess, mm-hmm. uh, in the last few months. Kind of give it, give us a progress report on how things are today. Sure. So we closed December 10th, and because it was the end of the year, we, we made sure we had our contractor lined up, and nothing was going to start till January just because of the holidays. It, it just didn't. I probably wouldn't recommend closing in December or anybody, but that was our experience. So January, we get ready to kick things off, li- living four hours, four and a half hours from Tulsa. Other two partners, Dave, Patty, and Chris, they live in Utah, so it was more challenging for them to get here. So I was up there a couple times to got to get things kicked off, and then they came in huge they were they're they're very they're very good on the construction side not only the number side but they have a construction background especially chris he knows more than i do i don't claim to ever know that but uh, he's a lot better than i am and we had this plan in place had our capital expenditure budget in place we had a contractor set up and the work began well after it got going we weren't happy with some of the work they were doing on some of the painting and the exterior started so we fired them because this wasn't working out and we had i would never recommend it we basically brought it all in-house to ourselves we found the contractors the painters we negotiated pricing all of our materials i was integral part of what i was doing so rather than just turning it over to a contractor which is typically what you're going to do right we took that on and we became the gc which i would never recommend for anybody but we we had to do it right we had limited time we're already a month into the closing. So we went ahead and did that. And Chris, Dave, Patty, myself, and Chad, we ran the construction. We weren't, and believe it or not, Sean, Dave, Patty, and Chris, they were doing repairs and work on this property. Like, you know, this is your baby, right? So things are going along. We're, we're, we're getting our, we're implementing our program, our, right. our construction program. So about February, going along. We started out at 32 vacancies when we got in there. And because folks weren't paying, and as you peel the onion back, when you get into a property, it went to about 46 vacancies, to about 59% uh, occupancy. That was a huge blow to us because we thought, well, here we are. We just got to do 32 units, get it going, and ramp it up. Well, then as you're going through, your vacancy kicks up. Now, we were on plan a little bit with that. Then COVID hits. And so here we are, brand new investors, first property that all of us had ever purchased, not just invested in, but purchased, not knowing too much about what we have to do, and COVID comes along. And I'll be honest with you, I think all of us inside, and one of us even said it, we need to sell this property. Like, what do you do? Like, we're going to be done. I think the good Lord had a different plan for us. And I, I can honestly say today, as of about an hour ago, I talked to our leasing agent, we are at 92.5% occupancy and we will, we are pre-leased at about 97. Yeah. By the end of October, we could be hundred percent occupied. Yeah. So, and we've got about $50,000 remaining of our money just to put into the, the pavement restriping some exterior stuff. We're just finishing up, but we, I, I couldn't be more happy. Like now we're, now we're in that phase of starting to tweak things, right? Let's start getting our control, our cost in line and you get some things going. Our rents have gone up. I think a one bedroom was 475 when we bought it. We're getting 640 now. Yeah. Yeah. It's just been insane. So during yeah. your construction, you had, you had a lot of your part of your, probably a lot of your lease problems fell out. So like, yep. so your, your occupancy went way up or your occupancy yep. went way yep. down, your vacancy went way up. Yep. So a lot of those things you would have had to deal with at some point anyway, probably they sort of sure. fixed themselves, but it was, it kind of compounded the stress or the problems that you had because it all happened simultaneously. Then you throw in COVID oh, as a, as a third unknown, right? Oh, uh, which, which creates a whole different level of 
what's going to happen, right? Yeah. You, just, you don't know what that is. So how do you think, so you guys are done with your construction now and it's, you're in full lease up mode? We, we've been in full lease up. We, we never, ever dipped during COVID. I, 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 yeah. I mean, we probably did five to six a month and we continue to do our remodel. We're just now, re, we got about seven more units to remodel and we'll be 100%. So we're still doing that. And we've got, a, like I said, a couple of things in the exterior need to be done, the parking lot, just some, I say some touch up stuff and it's turned out, it's beautiful, man. I mean, it's a beautiful property. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Yeah. It almost sounds like that property, people were waiting for that property to kind of get turned around. They were. It's almost like they were waiting to live there. They were. Because of the location and they were just waiting for someone to come in and turn it around. So that, that yeah. made your lease up even, even easier. Yeah. It's what this. I mean, that's as you're talking. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, man, that it must is. have just been a choice location. That once you did the one or two right things for that that's that exactly. property, people were there for you to 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 take those and yeah. lease them, you know, from you. I think when you own an apartment complex, and I I might be wrong in saying this, but when you take when you are having referrals, referring your your property to their friends and family, you know you're doing something right, and so. Our, our referral business, from what I'm understanding, has been very good. I handled with Patty the majority of the lease up. I'm a little bit OCD and I like to kind of a control guy, but it's okay. I, I handled a lot of the marketing and all we did was Facebook. We literally put a video ad of a gorgeous model that Patty and Dave transformed into this. It was just awesome and it was staged and we did a video of it. And I put it on the Facebook marketplace and we ran ads. 25 bucks a week max is what we'd spend. Sean, it's, it, we've been killing it with that. I get probably eight to 10 people a day just messaging me and I have a standard like robot response. I copy it, paste it, which says, give me your number. And then every morning at 8.30, I send it off to our leasing agent because she is so busy. I wanted to take that off her plate because of all the things she was doing, right? That it's lease up. I give it to her. She goes through calling them and handles it from there. So it's worked really well for us. I wouldn't recommend you do that on every property, but you know, this was our baby and I've got people's money on the line. You know, that's something I wanted to really involve myself in. So. Well, you're just great. getting it done. Yeah. You're just, you're just yeah. doing what you got to do to get it done. Do right? what you got to do. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, it's been great, man. Well, talk about, so that's awesome that you, I mean, that's the, so you, you're, it's, it sounds like you're charmed on your first deal. Honestly, yeah. you're right yeah. out of the gate, your first deal. Yeah, you 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 had some uh, struggles, but you've overcome them, and and you you've had a, a tremendous amount of success because of that. And now you now you can just sort of let this property do its thing. Mm -hmm. Tell us about a little bit about what you what you're doing, what you're focused on now. Are you are you trying to buy more properties, or what are you working on right now? Yeah, so we'll continue to. This is our baby. We'll continue to maintain this property. You know, trim costs. You know, refine things there and keep it going, so we can continue to cash flow on it. We're looking to refi it out probably in the next six months, five months, you got to go 12 months with our loan, December, and we'll do a cash out refine it, pay our investors back. They've been paid the entire time through COVID and, and whatnot, which has been great. Get them their money back. But in the interim as well, you're right. I am, I like to run. So I am like you, I'm looking for the next deal, the next deal, the next deal, as Corey says, opportunities. And so, yeah, every, I spend the majority of my day probably underwriting, analyzing deals, talking to brokers, but the most important thing, I think, and Corey says this, if you have the money, the deals will be there. So we've really focused lately on raising money or meeting folks that have money that want to invest with us. And we've had some success. Nothing's happened yet, but we have, we've had some success now lined up with some folks that are very interested in funding future deals with us. So that's, that's what I've been focused on big time. So you've, you've been able to put together some capital that that is going to support you with now Absolutely. and now you're going into the acquisitions phase i guess looking for properties to deploy that capital into right correct correct yep so that's good yeah that's awesome i i, I really wanted to hear your your story about that first property uh, yeah. from your perspective you know we talked to uh, dave and patty they kind of gave us some technical things and they talked about management stuff but i wanted to hear how you kind of because i knew you were the one i don't know what role that is exactly driving the bus you were the kind of the, the kind of the one putting that together and, sure. and uh, the tip of the spear on that project, I guess mm -hmm. you could say. Uh, so I wanted to hear kind of how you uh, came about that stuff. Yeah. But one yeah. of the things uh, about our podcast is it's called Next Level American Dream. So we always like to ask people, I think you're, I think you're, you're on the path towards your American dream and kind of living part of it now. But I want just to ask you, you know, what is the American dream to you? 
And then if you don't mind, maybe share with everybody the one or two things that you think you're doing that maybe are helping you kind of uh, take your American dream to the next level. Sure, sure. I mean, the American dream to me, I think it always has been, always will be, is just, you know, time. I don't have enough of it. Like, I don't, you know, we all go to bed at night, at least I do. And I, I pray that I, I do wake up tomorrow so I can be a better person, a better father, a better husband, just live my life according to the values that I think I have. And the American dream is to be able to spend all the time that I have with my kids who are younger and even when they're older, time. I just, I want time. And and that's the American dream to me. It's not a, a, a Learjet and a big house. All those, those things are great. And I have vision boards with those on there, which drives me. But the biggest thing I have is time, and that's what I want. And the other thing is, I, I, I turned a corner probably about five years ago on a spiritual side and whatnot, but I want to give back. Like, I want to help other folks, because I know where I've been, and I know where the struggles that I've gone through from everything, marriage, children, just life. I want to give back to folks, and I want to bring people with us to achieve their American dream, as you say, right? To achieve their goals and dreams, because they're not mine. So the two things I want, I want time and I want to give back. And I do that every day, whether it's an extra tip to somebody on a drink or a beverage, or tell somebody how great they are, or just speak positivity into somebody. That's really what I try and do on a daily basis, which I believe has me where I am at and has me working with the folks that are being presented to me that are coming into my life and my network now, that's why that's happening. And so for folks out there, if you just put yourself out there, honest, transparent, and you're a good person, I'm telling you good things are going to happen for you. I just believe that. I know you know that. So, yeah, that's a good, that's a good life philosophy though to have really. Yeah. You're kind of doing the pay it forward. Yes. That could be very easily why you're so charmed on that first deal. Maybe. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I yeah. honestly do, man. I, and I, I'll never forget it. It's, 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 it's where it's, be, I am where I am today because of the folks that are in my life now and that got me to where I am today. So I got to humble myself. Yeah. So, so I, I will ask you one last question. It, um, sure. So are you, are you finding it? So, I mean, you might be a little spoiled by you, by coming out of the gate so strong, getting that first deal put together and having such good success with it, even, even though you had to struggle through it, but now you're, you're winning. Mm-hmm. Are you finding it? the next deal just as easily or is it, or is it a little bit more difficult? I'd say both. I mean, I've got my, my feelers out there. I mean, I think there's a lot of opportunities out there and they're not all deals. So I think I'm having a, a good flow uh, of deals coming through. I think the raising the capital has come a little bit, I wouldn't say easy, but it, it, it's been a little bit better this time around. So I, I think it's, it's been about the same. And I, I'm like you, I'm pushing it though. So I, if you're not pushing it, and just relying on, you know, it's, gonna, it's not going to happen. Because like you said, they're gone like that. If you don't, if you don't uh, move on something, you're dead in the water. Right. So I, I play it as if it's the next fairway or it's the next deal. So, yeah. So it's, uh, it's, it, you're not finding it as difficult, but it's, 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 just, it's just going through the process, hitting yeah. the right deals. Yeah. People yeah. know you've closed a deal and you can close. Now they're willing to give you opportunities. That's what I think it comes down to. So it's actually in some ways maybe a little maybe a little easier or more streamlined, I guess you could say, sure. sort of acquiring that next lead or whatever it is to, to find the next property. Correct. That's, I that's agree with that. Cool. Yes, absolutely. Well, David, I'd like to have you back on. You know, we we sure. we, we did this uh, it's just, you know it's just thirty minute podcast, but uh, there's so much more to talk to you about. I think. Uh, so if you can, we'll we'll figure out some way to get you back on the show for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm honored, man. I really then, am. I appreciate it. So talk to people or tell people how they can kind of find David Royster, sorry, David Rosenbaum and what you have That's going okay. on. And, and, you know, if they, they want to t- talk about investing or it, learn more about a real estate investing or kind of your, your story, how can people sure. find you or get, in, get involved? So you can go to my website. I have my own website I put together. It's, it's Dave, or it's www.investory, like I-N-V-E-S-T-O-R-Y group.com. Investry is our company, and basically every investment has a story is where we came, came up with that. Or you can reach me. You can text me. Call me at 817-876-5628. I'm an open book. Uh, I, I have no secrets. There are no secrets. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. So, That's a good, good way to be anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. I appreciate wanted to hear you. about that, how you kind of came up with that first deal. I think that's an interesting story for everybody to hear. And I Thank appreciate you. you sharing that with everybody. We'll have you back on to talk about uh, some of that, some of your progress that you're making now. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. Take care, man.
Thanks for joining us for another episode of Next Level American Dreams. If you would like to learn more about what we talked about today, want to contact the team directly, or are interested in passively investing and being a part of our deal room, head over to our website at www.thompsonmultifamilygroup.com. Before you go, please leave a review. Your comments help us create more episodes for you to enjoy.